Welcome to the next. Hello Rockbugs, it's Jade. Welcome to a special access show. Today I'm taking a look at 2020, basically what the rest of the year is going to look like for survival. Ongoing big games, some smaller games that you may have missed, and some early access games that will either be coming out of early access or have definitely been in early access so long they really feel like they should be out by now. So I'm going over DLC plans, content plans, updates, and kind of how they're faring, good and bad. I'll be giving you a lowdown on what I think about all of these games, particularly on Xbox and PlayStation station of course but also some PC games as well and how development's going for them so please don't forget to like the video stay subscribed for all the best in survival news and let's crack on Kicking off with Art Survival Evolved, this game is nearly 5 years old now and it's still going strong, having one of its best weekends for concurrent players on Steam recently. The Genesis DLC is what brought that about and even though it's receiving pretty much a negative reception, 60% of players are saying it's not a great DLC on Steam, it still is being played by a bunch of people. And we've got part 2 coming at the end of the year, meant to be winter 2020, it should round off and finish off the story of Art Survival Evolved as we know it on this generation. On top of that we have a free mod once more, Crystal Isles map. It's meant to be coming out summer, wildcard notorious for being late so don't expect that till the very last days of that sunshine flowing. We've also got a TLC revamp. There's so many creatures in Art Survival Evolved that over the years some of them have become pretty redundant. So they're going to be revamped with new abilities, new ways to play and utilise some of these creatures and hopefully they're going to be adding a bunch more quality life improvements to the game overall. There is still some big things needed and I'm hoping this year may see some love for Primitive Plus, an alternative game mode that Ark has kind of neglected over the last 18 months and maybe some Switch updates which hasn't ever received a single bug fix update. Likelihood of that happening? Probably zero. It does look like the switch has been just a bit of a money grab but the rest of arc is very strong the player base is not going anywhere this huge dino time sync game is absolutely massive and it will continue to be big in 2020 Move over Ark, it's time for the big new daddy in town. Rust is coming to console whether PC fanboys like it or not. Xbox, PlayStation, hopefully in the second part of the year. That's according to its creator recently, who said don't expect it in the first half. So June onwards is when we can expect to see Rust drop on console, but the future is bright for PC and console development. They're going to be adding modular weapons properly into the game, I should imagine, this year. Much talked about been in development limbo for a number of years also added to that is the modular vehicles it seems like it's all going to be part of one package or possibly smaller chunkier updates rust ongoing development is just simply the benchmark for all other developers how to keep your game live and fresh there's still lots of optimizations doing and that's what pc players are crying about the most still but once console comes out a lot of the good stuff that goes into optimizing it for them platforms will come back for pc more skins more saltiness more rust Rust. Back last April, Conan Exiles went free to play as part of a PlayStation Plus offer. This brought a huge amount of new players, not just into Conan, but survival games in general. The year of 2020 looks to be one of the strongest yet for Funcom since launch, as they've announced brand new plans for a new map. I exclusively broke this to you before Christmas. It is coming very soon. It's going to be a huge new map, new ways to play, I'm guessing new creatures, new items, and it's definitely needed. Conan does get a bit stale, even though they've been updating the game quite consistently, alongside the pay DLC packs they bring out, which are pretty much mostly cosmetic stuff. They also introduce new dungeons and new areas and new ways to play, and I really love that aspect of Funcom. That's something I really hope they continue doing this year, and it looks like they will be. But they are producing a pay DLC map. We don't know how it's going to work, whether or not you'll be able to transfer your characters over or any items. We're hopefully going to get some more information soon their ceos pretty much baited them and told everyone it would be out in the first half of the year so i'm hoping it's going to be in the next few months we start to see some more information about what's happening with conan exiles of course it's available on all platforms and that helps with its popularity i definitely see a lot of people wanting less cosmetics and more meaningful dlc items so hopefully the brand new map adds to that but until then continued free updates that add more features like the full management system being revamped and a whole host more conan exiles is going to have a strong year especially now it's got backing from Daddy Tencent. 
You might not have seen much DayZ on my channel in recent months. Quite frankly, I just couldn't stand playing this buggy, horrible mess of a game anymore. But I realise there's so many of you that still love it. And I do love it. I just want them to actually get the game up and running a little bit better on console. If there's one divide between players and systems, it's definitely with DayZ being much better on PC than any of the other survival games. Even Ark doesn't have as many problems as DayZ when it comes to the updates that go forth on console. So, it has been getting gradually better they've just added modding support for consoles and i mean modding as in you can change and customize spawns creatures items finally long overdue but only on non-official servers so you still have to pay money for these rentable servers to customize daisy to your liking other than that they've stripped back pans a little bit concentrating on fixes that's what they said in their little roadmap a little while ago that they wouldn't be producing as many updates as they did last year it's all just about cementing the game and getting everything running a little bit better Quality of life improvements, small additions like small guns and items, no big huge substantial changes other than revisiting some things like how to heal, some sickness systems and possibly revisiting base building as a main priority as it's still been pretty much broke since it came out of early access last year. Where's my hillies? Pretty much what everyone says, they won't be coming this year, that's for sure. But hopefully Bohemia can turn things around, keep the game solid, and then people don't mind shelling that paid DLC like Livonia. You can expect them to put more content out like that for the rest of the year too. No saltiness for this next one, No Man's Sky. Although I don't have as much information to give you because the developers are pretty tight-lipped about what happens and it just suddenly appears they've got a brand new update, just like they did with the most recent Living Ships update, which added a whole new way to play the game with various new creatures, Living Ships, that you could actually grow from an egg and actually travel around in. This game just gets bigger and bigger. The developers, Hello Games, have committed to making even more content for the game going forward. They've still got some small side projects on the go, but definitely No Man's Sky is still a huge focus in 2020. As I said, we can't really sit here and predict what will actually happen, but I am pretty confident in the future of this game being supported. And some of the content that's gone into it in the last year alone has just been absolutely top notch. Maybe some people are never going to forgive the launch and the developers' stupidity in terms of the promo and the lies they were spouting, but they have come a long way. They learned from their mistakes, they've improved and added so much more than I think players ever expected, and that's going to continue in 2020 for No Man's Sky. This next one's going to hurt a lot of people deep inside their zombie field hearts. Seven Days to Die is continuing to grow in 2019 if you play it on PC. Console Scribs! Unfortunately, you know the story by now if you've been following my news videos. The Fun Pimps have stated that they are not going to be doing anything with the game until possibly the full game goes gold, and Seven Days to Die is pretty much still very far off from actually that aspect. Alpha 19, which is meant to be coming in the next few months, has got a bunch of new features that look pretty cool, including aero bots or drones, as well as a bunch of new weapons and revamps of the environments, character models, and so much more. It's just such a shame this won't be coming to console. They've said that they may look at it possibly as a new game once the brand new generation's out and it can handle it and they've got maybe some more time and some support. But until then, Watching Let's Players and YouTubers play on PC is the only way you're going to see this new content on 7 Days to Die as a console fan. Fallout 76 is much derided and I've given it its fair share of criticism over the last year and a bit. But the Wastelanders update is coming out in April. It's going to be the first part of a series of updates where they add finally some of the requested features from most of the Fallout community, including NPCs and companions and better structured missions. On top of all that, you can expect many more updates to come for the game. It looks like they're not giving up on this live service of it, a mess, and it has kind of slowly, slowly turned around and started delivering some of the stuff that a lot of people would have expected from a Fallout game. I wouldn't expect too much of a simple ride though, nothing can be this good with Bethesda lately, and looks like paid mods probably will end up coming this year, things will probably get a lot worse still. But there you go, Fallout 76, brand new update. I'm not really talking too much about early access games because it's kind of unfair sometimes. It does take a while to get some of this stuff out and you can never put a price on quality, uh, maybe. But Scum definitely is something that's going to be big. It has already been big. It was one of the most successful launches in recent memory. The players did devote a lot of time to it initially and then they kind of left so the task for the developers is to get them re-engaged look at all the brand new content coming in and they've been updating the game consistently the latest one adding ordnance explosives to certain zombies as well as hospital zombies that pretty much run for you because they've probably got the corona 
bunch of new contents also planned and incoming as well as revamps and rejigs of all their current systems so the future for scum looks bright it won't be coming to console though until 1.0 release on pc so probably not until next year so the hype around the Sons of the Forest trailer that dropped at the Games Awards show just before Christmas was incredible. Out of nowhere, we got an announcement of a sequel. Since then, we've had absolutely bubkiss, zero zilch, no interviews, no communications from the devs whatsoever about whether or not this game's coming out this year, if it's still a survival, is it now a single player, is it a multiplayer still? It definitely looks like it's gonna be still kind of co-op led. It looks like you're still gonna be able to go around with your friends from the little cutscenes in the game, but you never know that may have just been an intro who knows what i do know is that the original forest game is actually massive i've always said it they sold millions of copies on pc they sold millions of copies on the playstation 4 did you know that in europe it was the number seventh most downloaded game beating a whole host of other big rivals like ark conan exiles and daisy it outsold all of them in 2019 so if this manages to drop on xbox like they said they would maybe look at i really really would love that they announced that they were having some sort of exclusivity with sony and i'd love to see their game on as many platforms as possible once that ends so hang in there you xbox scribs the forest may end up coming i think it probably would in the late summer or maybe beginning of winter time that would be when nearly two years of exclusivity with sony is finished and it would get everyone hyped up again against the sequel especially if they start dropping some more brand new news i'm going to keep you guys posted the minute we hear anything about the sequel and about it possibly coming to xbox right we're definitely moving into some of the smaller games early access games and little gems that you may have missed now but subnautica probably isn't that small not the original anyway it sold millions of copies and it's pretty popular on console too but below zero the standalone dlc separate game has in fact made big waves but maybe not as big as people wanted it to convoluted story just not working right the devs went back to the drawing board and redid it all so it's currently available in a brand new update on pc it should be coming out on xbox and playstation but only when the pc version goes 1.0 if they're finalizing the story now lots of other things to add and story beats i predict that subnautica below zero will be out of early access sometime around the beginning of autumn that's that's optimistically looking at it like i said i really hope so it seems good it carries on pretty much the good stuff that was in subnautica exploration being scared out of your mind by leviathans all with a bit of a chilly colder feel so definitely i'll be revisiting this over the next few months Astroneer is continuing 2020 with more content updates and the long-awaited dedicated server hosting that's probably going to be the most exciting thing the performance on console isn't great for co-op and so moving it onto dedicated servers could be this game's biggest success in 2020 alongside I'm sure ongoing support recently it come out on the PlayStation 4 a few months ago it's gone from strength to strength and you can expect much more from Astroneer in 2020 just like The Forest, Stranded Deep has spent a number of years in early access, but it looks like it could be the year 2020 it reaches 1.0 on PC, and its impending release on Xbox and PlayStation is much anticipated. After being delayed nearly a year and a half, because of the collapse of Telltale Games, its publisher, it's finally got back on track, found a new publisher, and will be hitting consoles at the end of March or the very beginning of April. Added on to that, lots and lots of content still to come for 1.0, story, proper missions or proper aspects to go through lots of lore and pretty much just guide you through the watery depths of Stranded Deep fighting off sharks while surviving. I'm looking forward to this one. The split screen co-op might not be for everyone at the moment. I really do hope the devs add some proper co-op to it by the time it comes out 1.0. But it looks like they're taking their time and making sure it's all good rather than rush out something completely half-baked. I definitely see this as being a sleeper hit, just like the Forest was for console. It's going to bring in a huge amount of revenue, and that might be the big push they need to get it up to 1.0 release by the end of the year. Next up, a game I got behind when I found out it was coming to console. The idea of being a Harry Potter wizard fighting against other players and demons and creatures sound pretty good, especially for console players. Unfortunately, Citadel Forge Fire didn't really push the bar enough the content it ended up launching out of 1.0 on pc really didn't bring players back to it and it has just been a bit of a damp squib 
They did just release one update that added a lot more to beginnings of the game, showing you tutorials and getting NPC missions in it a little bit better, and a lots of bug fixes, but it was quite slow to bring that update out. And they've promised a second update, which adds some end game content, much needed more dungeons, and much more variety in creatures and high level mobs. So hopefully that all comes along, and hopefully Citadel Fortress Fire builds up on its fan base, even if it is still just a little bit dead on PC, at least on console, it might live on. Space Engineers is actually here on Xbox already in beta. It's been out of early access on PC since last year and it is going to be coming to the Xbox One. Don't rule out PlayStation 4 either. It looks like it's just going to be a period of exclusivity and it will eventually hit the PS4 consoles too. It's coming out full game though in April on the Xbox. So right now, if you pre-order the game, you can get access to the beta via the Xbox Insider. Expect more DLC to come in the future for the PC version and continue support with updates, refining and adding more to this very hardcore space simulation survival game. So strength to strength in 2020. The Raft continues to receive content pretty much on a quarterly basis with big updates and in between some smaller stuff coming into the game. This started out as a free to play demo, it was so wildly popular that it got bought up by a smaller publisher, the guys behind Scrap Mechanic and it's gone from strength to strength, it sold a good million or so copies on Steam and I can't wait for it to hit the console. They've not announced any plans like that but it does look like eventually it will end up on console. I can't see why not. It doesn't have the most complicated sure. systems around it. Till then, expect regular updates just like they did in 2019, adding new things like the bear, new islands and locations to explore. The next big one that's coming up is the Caravan Island, which adds even more stories and more opportunities. I'm guessing it's gonna be called Chapter Two, and they're kind of doing their story beats in these little mini chapters that involve environmental puzzles, as well as lots of lore and story that you find in a months some of the stuff they've also got a brand new mob creature coming too just like the rat that they added in the chapter one solid if yet maybe not too spectacular the raft i'm sure will continue in 2020 and let's hope we do hear news about console release soon as I mentioned, their publisher, Axelot Games of The Raft, also make their own game, Scrap Mechanic. This is another one that's been in early access a number of years. Did you know, though, it's meant to have a survival mode? It's coming closer and closer. They've been teasing over the last three or four months little screenshots and GIFs, and they've been working on the survival trailer. So I expect an announcement any month now. Hopefully, we're going to finally get a chance to try out the survival mode and not just the crazy contraptions you've seen in Creative. I will cover this more in another early access video, taking a look at this for sure. I really like this game a lot. But yeah, I once the survival mode is out, I fully expect 2020 to be devoted to bug fixing, adding more features for that survival mode, and that will be the core focus for this game, and maybe we'll see a full release in 2021. A personal favourite of mine, The Long Dark, I absolutely love this game, but it's taken far too long to deliver some of the promised content. When it launched out of early access, it did so with its sandbox, and a lot of people loved that element. Jumping on, surviving and thriving, finding items, and pretty much that's the meat and potatoes of the game. But it did produce a story mode for it as well. They've got a pretty chunky story, and they ended up redoing it though, because developers weren't happy with the first two episodes that it shipped with. This took a substantial amount of time, so much so that it led to big delays for episode three, and we still got two more episodes to go. Considering it's taken nearly two and a half, three years to get to this point now, I wouldn't expect the final episodes to be coming all this year, but I would like to see them speed things up a little bit. Players do want to see a conclusion to the storylines with episode four and five, and there's no confirmation though that this will be happening in 2020, other than we can assume that the studio is going to be working on the final episodes this year. Till then, they are tidying us over with continue updates for the sandbox mode. The Errant Pilgrim just went live a little while ago as well, and that added a bunch of new content, new locations, and new items to play around with too, as well as the Timberwolf. Another game maybe not to expect to see too much huge stuff this year is Atlas. Now, they've not given any timelines about when they expect to come out of early access. That I don't mind, but last few months have been pretty bad for the game. It came out on Xbox in October and it brought a huge surge of interest and players to the game, especially being cross-play with Steam. That platform had reduced player numbers and so everything seemed to be going well. They then announced that they would be going a bit quieter with quality of life improvements. And this baffled people when you've just got a new intake, you wanna be hitting them with new content. It looks like the Atlas team were moved to help out on their sister studio, Wild Cards and Art Survival Evolved. 
on Genesis. And even with all that going on, even more bad stuff was to come. The lead developer that they only just hired to revamp the game and carry it going forward quit recently to go and work on another project. And so Atlas is pretty much dead in the water at this point. I of course expect updates and I'm sure they'll come up with another revised roadmap and they'll have someone else that's going to be taking over the lead development duties. But yeah, don't expect too much from this game for the rest of the year. If you're expecting it to come out on the PlayStation 4, I really don't think you want it. It's not a great game at the moment. It's got some great ideas, but there's a lot of content missing and a lot of it just doesn't necessarily work that well. It could probably do with a big rewrite. And that's what I'm expecting them to announce this summer when feelings are high about Art Survival Evolved and their free content. I'm pretty sure they'll announce that they're going to revamp it once more. And hopefully this means we'll see a better, better game that hopefully re-engages with its player base but don't count your chickens on it. One that's only just come out on console, Xbox and PlayStation, but it seems to be getting a little bit of a cult following, Memories of Mars. Now this game has never been big, it never reached any sort of popularity on PC with only a minuscule amount of players picking it up, but it's had a big publisher. 505 Games brought you No Man's Sky on Xbox, they've also brought you Death Stranding on PC and they seem to have had a runaway successes with a few other games too. So here's hoping they'll carry on getting development. It does look like they push this out on console just to make some quick money but I'm really hopeful the developers carry on supporting it. If you don't know what it is, it's kind of literally rust on Mars. Well, that was the perception. They've toned down the PvP aspects a little bit. They have zones where you can shoot other players and you have to go around the planet trying to get schematics unlocking high grade armor and brand new weapons taking out mechs and robots i actually quite like the game but there's definitely much more needed work and it probably wasn't ready for an xbox ps4 release just yet but as i said the devs look like they're committed to putting more content out for it hopefully as long as it carries on making a little bit of money for the publisher Green Hell has done well for itself on PC. The survival game set in the Amazon is just about to add co-op and this is going to be the first precursor to it coming to console. The devs already announced that it will be coming to Xbox, PlayStation and the Nintendo Switch. So normally this is one of them big steps it will do because console obviously like to play with others just like PC. So that will be coming very, very soon in April to co-op and I expect them announcing it will come to Xbox and PlayStation for the autumn time. Maybe a bit longer than some people anticipated but I can see see a good hefty amount of time being needed between them unless they've been employing a port team to take on board some of the work while they're still carrying on some of the other features after 1.0 release. A decent little game, psychological horrors in the Amazon when you have to pretty much take a bunch of drugs if you want to get through it. Looking forward to Green Hell, much more definitely on console and I can't wait to see what it's like with friends on the co-op mode in April. Obviously a lot of survival games rely on first person and third person, hacking down a tree and pretty much making sure you've got plenty to eat. But Frostpunk is a little bit different. It's a survival simulation game that I've enjoyed immensely over the last few years. It's out of early access now, it's on Xbox and PlayStation and they've had two DLCs come and go. The last DLC is going to be scheduled for the rest of this year and I think it will build on the great last one they just had the last autumn. The third part and final DLC, you can even buy a season pass for this, is meant to be coming this year. So big things still to come for this game. If you're a simulation fan and a survival fan, this one fits the bill. Genesis Alpha 1 is a bit of a low-key game. It's much more, again, in that simulation bracket, but also with first-person shooter aesthetics. You're on a ship, you pretty much have to protect your ship from alien infestations, all the while cloning aliens and getting resources from planets down below. You can build and customize your ship and do a hell of a lot with it. It's just had a free update go out where you can now add cloning aliens specifically directly, add them and bring them to your ship, and a bunch of other fixes, as well as its Steam release for the first time. So I'm expecting Getting some more updates for this in the coming months, hopefully to keep it going and add some more content. It could do with it, it does get a bit repetitive very soon, but it's definitely something special about this one. I like this one a lot. Outwards, a surprise hit survival RPG game, kind of genre defining or bending a lot of expectations. I wasn't in love with it. I thought it would be great, but I just didn't really gel. I would like to revisit it. There's got a brand new DLC that's meant to be coming out this spring. It is paid DLC, but they have added a bunch of new content and fixes to the game while it's been in its first year. So expect things from Outward. I could see this carrying on and growing and getting more content updates for the rest of 2020, as well as probably some more paid DLC too. 
Pig's Ark was a game I was really super hyped. I thought it'd be the perfect mix of Ark and Minecraft, and it ended up just being a bit of a letdown. Buggy, broken on console particularly, and devoid of any real communication, it took months and months to get it into a playable state. Since then, PC and Xbox PS4 did receive updates and it hit 1.0. They added some free DLC, the Skyward DLC, that added a bunch of new content to PC, but that was like five or six months ago. Since then, it just hasn't appeared on console after the devs promised it would. So I don't know what's going on. They seem to be focusing more on smaller issues and bugs and problems, but even then they've not been receiving that many updates on console. Another snail games mess, the publishers of Art Survival Evolved. Best avoid this till that gets that update. Sometimes early access needs gradual time. You get word of mouth and people start playing your game and it starts to be all good. But more and more, when you've got early access, if you don't have that big splurge of players, you'll end up being a bit of a fail. And then there's times when your 1.0 release really galvanizes a player base and really brings attention to your game. Sadly, Miscreated ain't one of them. It really struggled when it released out of early access. It'd been in early access a number of years, and it, at first glance, it looks like it's just another Daisy Rust clone. I guess kind of that's what it really is. Maybe that's why it's not been successful. They did have brand new DLC that came out a little while ago, adding a brand new map, the Canyonlands, and it spiked players' interest a little bit, but it still quickly went down once more. It just can't seem to catch a break, and I can't see development going on much further for this game in 2020. If they haven't got people buying it, they sure as hell can't afford to keep developing stuff for it. Just wrong timing for this. Unfortunate, it is a bit of a good game. It just needed a lot more content and a lot more focus from players when it released. Rune 2 seems to come out of nowhere. This survival God of War game seemed to be okay. Well, no, not really. It'd been in development for a number of years, gone under a bunch of renames because they just couldn't settle on something or had copyright issues. And eventually, the day they released, well, maybe the day after, the studio heads announced they were quitting and going to work for Bethesda. I don't think I've seen such a horrendous cash grab move ever. Human Edge Studios pretty much abandoned this game and left their publisher up the creek. It's normally the publishers that we're having a goes at, but this time it was the studio that kind of douched everyone over. So they've gone to work for Bethesda, Roundhouse Studios is their new name, and it left the publisher having to threaten legal action so they could get hold of the game code and try and carry on support. Since then they have managed to secure it and they've said they're going to carry on supporting the game. They're trying to find developers to take the project forward, but I would avoid this like the plague. So if you see it on the Epic Games, store or he was hoping it was come to console no boy you don't want this game boy you don't technically dark and light is still in early access so you've got to give these kinds of games a bit of a break it may just take a few years and they'll come back with some updates it hasn't had an update in 18 months it is pretty much abandoned where it is published by snail games made by snail games usa a subsidiary or partners of wildcard and art survival evolved yep you've guessed it another early access cash grab it had more potential it really was the first game to come out from snail games as a studio and people seem to like the idea of magic and survival but it was a bit of a beast when it launched not enough people held attention with it and people could see literally they'd copy and pasted stuff from Art Survival Vault's engine. It never really took off, they announced some pay DLC eventually, although that ended up being free to play, and the developers have had a hard time. It's really not their fault, it looks like the publishers have done what they've done with a bunch of other games they've tried doing, giving people lots of money, hyping it up, and then not supporting them developers any further. So boo snail games, avoid anything they put out, literally avoid it, until you actually get some decent reviews. Another failed game that won't see the light of day on console. So them games are pretty much dead in the water as I mentioned, but I don't want to leave it like that. Let's focus on some games you should be looking out for in 2020 that seem to be doing very well, quietly going under the radar or just having consistent updates. Kicking off with The Mist. This is a great little survival game that has a lot of placeholder objects in it and they're slowly getting swapped out for original pieces. In it you can go and get yourself some NPCs, much like the previous game I just mentioned, but you're surviving and getting zombies in a killer mist. When the mist descends you have to make sure you inside or face the consequences against souped up hyper mutant zombies. It's got base building in it or base securing I should say and it's definitely got a nice mix of that NPC gameplay versus you and against other zombies. So look out for this one, developers worked hard on it, it's carried on updating it and it seems to be growing and growing with each single update. 
Pray for the Gods is a great little game, very much in this mold of Shadow of Colossus, but with survival elements, you'll be taking on smaller enemies as well in between battling giant, massive creatures and making sure that your food and you've got the right gear on. This is all coming together nicely. It's been in early access a while and it will be coming to Xbox and PlayStation in the future too. They're just refining everything right now. They've still got plans to add more creatures and they're still adding and improving to the game while it's in early access. So stay tuned for this one. I think this will be good when it does eventually hit Xbox and PS4, hopefully later on this year. There are a bunch more early access games I want to talk about with their update plans for the year, but I'm going to leave them in a separate video, including Survive the Night, something I thought was pretty decent. A bit rough around the edges, but I actually played a lot better than even DayZ. That's continually getting support, so that'll be coming soon too. And this land is my land, a game where you take control of a Native American Indian as you try and raise an army against the people that are trying to take your lands. It's a single player game, but it's got survival aspects to it and simulation aspects. And finishing off with Zero Survival, a game I nearly pigeonholed as a Battle Royale or DayZ clone, but actually it's been coming on leaps and bounds. They've just added base building, or they will be, and they've got a bunch of other content in it as well planned to make it not just a survival sandbox mode with unique missions, unique events, but also adding some different game modes. They are thinking of adding like team deathmatch and stuff like that to it as well. And they are finally working on much more art and assets to replace a lot of the placeholder stuff that was there. So the future is bright for some of these games and I will keep you guys up to date. And I can't finish off a survival show talking about the games of 2020 without mentioning at least Minecraft. Yes, the updates aren't coming as quickly as fast as most people would like, but they are pretty big and huge and they're drumming up loads of excitement. And Minecraft, I'm sure, will be one of the biggest games, as it always is in 2020. I'm looking forward to finding some time to delving back into it. I really haven't played this game in a number of years, so I will be looking forward to whatever comes next. With the Never Forest, I do believe, in beta at the moment, and that should be rolling out to everyone very soon. But there's one survival game, well, just about survival, some people might say it's not, but I don't care, is Terraria. That's definitely something I want to revisit at the moment, and I will be doing that in some live streams. So, Terraria's Journey's End is the final update for the game, supposedly, and hopefully I'll be working on Terraria 2 or something very different in the future. But it's going to basically go over all the stuff from years gone by, redundant stuff, and give it a bit of a remix, a re-evaluation, because new content has kind of superseded a lot of the old. And so it's going to revamp a lot of the content you've come to expect with Terraria, as well as adding a bunch of new weapons, new enemies, the usual guffins. That is meant to be coming out, well, it's meant to come out at the end of 2019, but it got pushed back, so expect it hopefully some point soon. And I definitely will be governing this, believe it or not. Terraria and Minecraft are two of my three favourite games of all time. So, thanks a lot for watching, guys. A big lengthy video, I realise, but hopefully it shows that survival in 2020 ain't stopping. Games that you love, you games that you sink the most time into, are going to be here with content and updates and DLC. So, I'll be here to cover every single aspect of all that stuff. Make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll see you, Ratbags, for another Access Show soon.